Hello, everybody. Thank you. I hope you can hear me. Um, thank you for the invitation. It's great to be here while we get set up. Um, I, I decided to just have some pictures on the background uh, running so that you don't fall asleep when I talk and also you don't think about food uh, because I know everybody's hungry. But uh, also 15 minutes is a short time, so rather than tell you the history of Triangle, I'm going to tell you a bit of the story around it, uh, or certainly a, a few general ideas and perhaps a couple of anecdotes, um, and maybe refer to some of these pictures towards the end of it. Uh, the Triangle Network was established in 1982 by uh, the uh, British sculptor Anthony Caro and the philanthropist um, uh, Robert Loder. It came out of an idea that Tony Caro had back at that time, back at that time uh, having been teaching in art school as well as being a practicing artist, uh, because, he, came, because he, he realized that as soon as formal education would end for artists, there would be this sort of cliff, this nothing, this moment where you would be encouraged to go into your studio and start creating. And unless you became super famous and uh, became part of a circuit where uh, you'd have commercial galleries and you'd be part of biennales and, of course, now art fairs, you would be very much left on your own devices. So the idea that um, him and Robert had was to create the equivalent, perhaps, of a summer camp, a two-week workshop. Uh, they started in upstate New York, uh, which was where the first uh, manifestation happened. And it was the, the idea was to bring artists to work alongside each other. So to have a situation where they would learn from one, each, from one another, uh, it wouldn't be about necessarily collaboration, but it would be, I don't know what's happened to the slide presentation. Oh, maybe it yeah, needs to go in a loop. But it would, just be, it would just be an opportunity to spend time together and to, and to use dialogue and to use thinking and process uh, as a way of introducing the activities to each other, rather than product. So it was also very much an answer to a more formal way of presenting artwork, which would be through the product, a commission, a finished piece of work. Um, we, I, th I guess in this conversation I should just say, I, I will use words such as mid-career, international, and all these things. Please uh, treat them with a pinch of salt. I think these are shorthand uh, words that we uh, sort of use on, uh, on the everyday when we try and, and quickly talk about what we do, but I don't know what a mid-career artist is and I'm not really sure uh, what an international platform is either. But, uh, but I'm saying it and using it um, in that sort of, uh, 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 you know, ignorance is bliss, I guess. But um, the concept of the workshops, as I was saying, is not necessarily new, bringing artists together to work together for two weeks, that this very, the, the intensity of it, uh, it was perhaps in the 80s, but it, even now, it's nothing really new. But perhaps what was uh, different about this is that uh, it spread, in, uh, it spread internationally. Uh, as you've seen in this sort of like rolling uh, uh, section of images, there's a map with lots of dots in it, and it's a, a fairly recent map of where triangle activities have happened over the years, either uh, on, a, a, on a regular basis or maybe sort of as, a, as, a, as an event that has happened that stopped and started or maybe never started. Um, and this is also one of the reasons called network rather than a franchise. We are not Starbucks, we are not McDonald's, we all look very, very different around the world. Uh, uh, triangle projects are all very different. They're all very much run locally for uh, a local audience, but for local artists. But the reason why it was called Triangle, and I think, I'm, I know I'm jumping back and forth, maybe we can just leave it like that and then I can start it. Or you can start it right here. Oh, okay. The reason why it was called Triangle is because in its, in its very beginning, it connected artists from the US, uh, the UK, and Canada. And that's why that's the triangle that it drew. And uh, luckily, very quickly, it lost the shape, but it kept the name, just to kind of for a series of for, a sec, for, for the sake of continuity. And it lost the shape when uh, uh, the organisers decided to invite two artists from South Africa, uh, namely um, David Koloane and Bill Ainsley, who, after participating in this workshop, they 
thought that this way of learning from each other, this idea of learning by exchange, would have really uh, worked in their own country, where in the 80s we're still talking about Af South Africa under the apartheid, uh, where education was either very formal or completely unrecognized, and there was very much uh, a separation, obviously, between black and white, but also between many other things. And what they did, they organized the, show, the, the, the workshop in South Africa, and it was a huge success. It was one of the very few opportunities for black and white artists to work together, but also for artists that were self-taught, perhaps, or were at earlier stages in their career, with those that had been already through uh, very uh, established institutions that were PhD artists. The idea of that thinking and making was the common leveler for the participants to the workshops was a way of it creating a dialogue at levels that sometimes, uh, whether in the institutional arena, perhaps this would have been uh, much more difficult. So as I was saying, the idea of the workshops were really to create an opportunity for artists to talk to one another, to talk not just ab about different levels of career, but also across uh, the, um, the international boundaries, across cultures and across, uh, and across nations. And the way they're still organized is that there is a local group um, of artists who take the model, this, this sort of concept of how to organize the workshop, and then they do it at local level. So they, they bring uh, half of the participants of the workshops. The workshops are between 15 and 20 artists that take part in it. Um, half of these artists are local, and the other, are, uh, the other half is generally from the region, but also further afield. So when, the, when David Koloane and, uh, and Bill Ainsley took the workshop to South Africa, they also invited artists from other parts of Southern Africa to participate. And again, this was also, we're, still to, we're talking about 85, uh, an opportunity for artists that perhaps live, work in, in, in a similar region, but perhaps haven't met each other but because of boundaries and visa. And there's still, uh, the, these difficulties are still very strong. Uh, artists travel and in this age of globalization sounds like we can all move around. But actually, just yesterday, I was told that an artist that we invited from Pakistan to Gasworks uh, was denied visa, even though we've done everything legally. So this idea that we can all move freely is, is, is bizarre, and we all know it's not true, and I think we need to shout that even louder. Um, I don't know how I'm doing with time, but hopefully I still have some. So over the years, what I'm showing here is a sort of like a, a, with the images, is that the idea of the workshops has become very much ingrained, and men, more and more partners have adopted this program, uh, this, this model, sorry. They've taken it back home with themselves. So you see in this, in this image, um, they've taken it back home, and they've, they've created this sort of local satellite. And actually, my role as the director of Triangle is, is, is very much to manage how exchanges could happen. It's, it's to work with the idea of mobility. But I have no influence, and nor do I want it, in, in deciding who participates in the workshops, what sort of selection of artists gets made. And the idea that, uh, is that uh, initially, all the workshops start with no theme. There, there are, in some cases, some like... Uh, idea of a perhaps a concept, whether it's we've had workshops around performance or we've had uh, uh, workshops about uh, artists that operate out of islands, either as a, as a concept as well as a uh, geographical space. But the idea is that they're, they're all very open and uh, what, you're, what you're setting up is a situation where the participants decide over the period of the two weeks what the, the, the perhaps recurrent theme or where the thread might be. So it's really about uh, creating the settings for something to happen, but really not knowing what that might be at the end. And that's also the way this is presented to the public. So uh, the, the first, the, the, the initial part of the workshops are generally um, closed door, so that's very much about the participants, but then it ends with an, with an, open, an open day. And that's an opportunity for the artists to show the work that they've done during the two weeks, which is generally in process, making work in two weeks 
It's obviously a bit of a joke. Nobody uh, believes that that's where you're going to create your masterpiece. It might happen, but the idea is that it, this is an open, particularly when you're in a place that and you've never been in a situation that it's uh, not necessarily familiar. But the idea is to kind of use what you have around, use your uh, peers, and, um, and create something that makes some sort of statement, some sort of gesture. And that is then, uh, through the open day, introduced to the public. And the idea of the, having the public there, again, it's obviously not to show what art uh, from around the world looks like or what uh, uh, the workshop can produce in terms of art, but it's again to continue with this idea of a dialogue. It's about uh, engaging the locals with, with artists from abroad or their own artists and starting that kind of conversation about what art may uh, look like or what mu function might it have in these sort of uh, setups. All the workshops continue, they've diminished because they're very expensive and funding have been a big issue and uh, we can talk more perhaps this afternoon about that. But what I wanted to say is that they've also been the, the bedrock for a lot of projects that followed within the Triangle Network. So some of the partners over the years established themselves as uh, permanent spaces in Johannesburg, in London. I also am also the director of Gasworks in London which actually is a copy of the Bag Factory. The Bag Factory in Johannesburg set, was set up in 1991, where after years of organizing the workshops, uh, the local organizers, David Koloani, as I mentioned, they thought we need a, a permanent space, but this idea of the exchange can happen over a long period of time. Two weeks is not enough. Artists in this country don't have studios, uh, and therefore everybody operates out of their own garage or bedrooms. There isn't really that idea of, bringing, of creating a community. We need that space. And this sort of uh, local community of artists that also had this sort of international um, inflow, but also outflow all the time, because artists also would then go to workshops. This, the, the idea of being part of your own network is that exchanges can happen within it. You could be the advisor for each other. Uh, you could be the sort of uh, the, the, the person that helps setting up new spaces, which is what I do, and I feel incredibly privileged, but many people within the network have that function. We're there to support this grassroots grid as it expands or contracts over the years as well. That's this sort of network movement where you're not necessarily trapped uh, by an infrastructure and therefore things can happen. Uh, that there could be a flurry of things, but also it can, it can decrease. And what I was saying, that the, the, the workshops also underpinned the idea for residencies, um, and that's what uh, for example, in London we run, but also the Bag Factory, and many of our partners, Korge in, in India, many of our partners continues to do. But you're stretching, but we're stretching the, the, the idea of, of a workshop where artists interact with one another over a longer period of time. I think I'm nearly done. So the residencies and, that, well, so the, 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 the spaces that um, have become more institutionalized within, within Triangle, and I should speak about Gasworks because that's where I'm, I'm, I'm based all the time, um, really try to continue, this sort of, to, conti to continue to be bridges between uh, the locality, so serving the local artist group. For example, Gasworks has studios for London-based artists. We were very lucky to have been able to buy and refurbish the building lately, uh, recently, uh, which has secured spaces in a city where uh, buildings are sold off to developers and then uh, turned into luxury apartments. So the idea of actually securing a space that will be, at least for the foreseeable future, uh, a space for artists in a fairly central part of London, it's become a luxury. And actually, okay, I've got probably a minute left. I wanted to say that, you know, when Triangle started in 1982, there was very much this need to set up a, a, a space for dialogue, a space for thinking and a space for making for artists. And you would think that almost 35 years later, things have changed, and things have changed in many ways. But um, there's, a, there's a lot more happening around the world. Uh, partners uh, around the world where there was very little visibilities in the 80s and the 90s have become a lot more visible, more stronger. Certainly the internet has happened. People can find out what's happening around the world a lot more than they could in the mid 80s. But the market has also increased very much. And this idea that artists are, uh, you know, th that the output of artwork goes very quickly within uh, this sort of commercial sphere 
has become very pressing, certainly uh, for me living and working in London and working with younger artists. I can see that pressure that maybe I was naive, but I don't know that I recognized many years ago. So actually this idea of creating a space, even if it's a bubble, uh, where artists can be free to make mistakes, experiment, have a residency where at the end of the three months, in the case of Gasworks, they do not have to produce a piece of work, that actually the idea of <coughs> thinking, reading, meet, developing a network is the success of the residency, uh, have become even, even more important. So it's interesting to see how, as things change, we're still... Um, talking the same talk that they did in the, in, the, in the 80s, which is like, we need a space where artists can actually make work and possibly get it very wrong, because that's how, I think, making mistakes is how you learn to move forward. Perhaps I should leave it there. I mean, I, I said I mentioned the challenges, and I think the market is a challenge. I talked about those words that I use without knowing what they mean, uh, international and, and emerging and all of that. And I think they remain a challenge for, for, for us at Triangle, still trying to figure out what that means and what we can do with it. Um, how to stay relevant and how we can get funding for something that doesn't necessarily uh, translate into this sort of product that can be sold. But it's about this experience, that it's about that development uh, that happens um, uh, without that immediate outcome that we've become to uh, become so accustomed with. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Yes, thank you.